Every day you have encounters with immortal beings, with souls who will live for all eternity. You might have only one encounter with a soul, and the next time you will see them is in eternity. God has placed you on this earth to have those encounters with other people, to be that light of Christ for others. You have no other option but to be a saint. When people came face to face with saints, they were literally seeing Christ in front of them in a sense, because they were seeing souls who completely emptied themselves and filled themselves with only Christ, with only what God wanted and desired them to be. You have to be a complete and total vessel of Jesus Christ. And the quickest and most surest way to do this is through the Blessed Virgin Mary. She herself became another Christ in essence. She even had Christ in her womb. She was the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Who better can we go to than to her? We cannot miss any more opportunities to bring souls to Christ. Every soul that is brought in front of you, you only have one shot. You only have that one encounter. Christ ascended into heaven, but he left us the Eucharist. He left us tools and sacraments so that we can be other Christ. We cannot miss out on this opportunity. So how do we start? Today, we start with Lent. We start with a season of 40 days, 40 days in the desert, the same amount of time that Jesus spent in the desert. We go to the desert with Jesus, where we can grow closer to him, empty ourselves of the junk, empty ourselves of everything we have put in ourselves, and open it so that we can more fully receive Christ. The world is in crisis, and it needs you to be a saint. There are five areas of your life you can work on during the season of Lent. Depending on where you are right now, you can increase at these different stages. The first area of your life you can work on is your prayer life. Without this, you are nothing. If you are starting at the very beginning and don't have a prayer life yet, you need to at least start with 30 minutes of prayer a day. That's at least one rosary and 10 to 15 minutes of mental prayer. You need this prayer time so you can talk to God, so you can hear His voice, so you can know His will for your life. He loves you and He knows what's best, so you have to trust Him and open your heart to Him. You will not be able to survive without your daily rosary and mental prayer. You need both of these. If you already have this in your prayer life, then you need to start increasing it, and you'll discover it through prayer what God's asking you to do. The next area of your life is going to be catechism or spiritual growth. This is where you're going to be feeding your soul so that you will have inspirations to be holier, to pray more. This can be reading lives of the saints, reading your catechism, reading spiritual books written by saints. You can section it off by reading at least a chapter a day. You can listen to podcasts or priest homilies or channels like Census Fidelium or Gabby After Hours, things like Bible in a Year by Father Mike Schmitz. You need the spiritual nourishment each and every day to continue to inspire you so you continue praying, you continue sacrificing, you continue through your Lenten sacrifices, but also you keep growing in your faith. You can't love what you don't know, so you need to keep learning about our faith. The next area of your life to look at is going to be penance. If you're going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you need to be disciplined. You can't be enslaved to every comfort of the world. You need to set yourself free so you can fully be who God created you to be. If God calls you one day to be a martyr, how are you going to have the graces to do that if you're already denying the graces God's trying to give you today? Every one of our Lenten practices and exercises can only be done with prayer, with God's help and grace. That's why prayer is first, then your spiritual nourishment, and now we're going into the things that are gonna make us uncomfortable, that are gonna push us outside of our comfort zone. The easiest and most natural way to do penances would be through athletics, pushing your body to its max. Maybe it's only 15 minutes a day, maybe it's 30 minutes, but doing something like lifting weights, going on a run, maybe bike riding, something that will allow you to suffer just enough so that you can connect with Christ crucified. You can connect as that sweat drips down your face. You can connect to the blood of Jesus Christ. Penances that can help you be more disciplined and be that disciple of Jesus Christ is things like just simply waking up on your first alarm, saying no to sleeping in. You can do cold showers. We can even do little penances throughout our day. You can make sure that you go to bed on time. Once it hits nine o'clock, 9.30, no matter what you're doing, do your night prayers and get to bed. Stay on a strict routine and make yourself disciplined. Again, you can only do this with God's grace by asking for his help. Otherwise, all of this is in vain. Other great penances is connected with fasting. We need to say no to our stomach, to those cravings that we have. This Lent have no sweets. Don't eat sugar. It matters what we put in our bodies. If you haven't watched Gabe's fasting video yet, we need to free ourselves from our addiction to sugar. If you try fasting, you know, going periods of time without eating and you're experiencing headaches, 
irritability, constant hunger cramps and pains. These are probably and most likely symptoms of being addicted to sugar. Once you free yourself from the added sugars that we have in our life, things that are in our pasta and breads, then you can more adequately fast without having those symptoms. When you're eating natural foods, vegetables, meats, items that don't have added sugar, then when you decide to take the next step and actually do periods of fasting, where maybe you skip breakfast or you fast until three o'clock, you won't experience such extreme symptoms. You also won't have that fatiguing three o'clock hour tiredness anymore. Your body will be a more efficient and clean system where you can think clear and live well and be complete vessels of Jesus Christ. The last area of your life to work on during the season of Lent is almsgiving. We cannot enter the kingdom of heaven with money. We come into this world with nothing and we leave with nothing. St. Francis of Assisi was a great example of this. As he chose to lie naked with no clothing as he died, symbolizing him leaving this earth with absolutely nothing. We too are also gonna leave this earth with nothing. So we need to decide now what we're gonna do with our wealth, with the money God has entrusted us with. We are so blessed that he has given us anything. And so we need to give him our first fruits, the best of what we have. This can come in many different ways, but typically it's about 10% of your income. So whatever that is, find an organization, find a ministry, something where you can donate that money to. This season of Lent, I'm giving my alms to cloistered communities, to religious orders who rely solely on our alms giving. They are so essential to our spiritual life. Their prayers sustain our world. A lot of us probably owe our faith to the prayers of devout cloistered souls. So this is your opportunity to give back to them. In the description below, I'll post some communities that I'm donating towards. You can also support focus missionaries, young adults who devout two or more years of their life to serving college students. This ministry is so important and essential in our time. Comment below any other good organizations you plan to give alms to. During the season of Lent, we have to take this opportunity to be saints, to work on our prayer life, to work on our spiritual growth, to work on our fasting, to work on penances and our almsgiving. These five areas of our life will help us in the quest, in the mission to be saints of Jesus Christ. God bless you and may the Virgin Mary protect you.